Hey there, welcome to another video. In this video, I will customize the wishlist icon in the app block and I'll see which JavaScript framework we can use to do some Ajax request and updating the icon when the wishlist is already in the, the wishlist product is for the user. So there are some other important things about app embed and app block that you will learn in this video. So let's start from the documentation. Uh, one of the main reasons I mention documentation too often is because you have to familiarize yourself, yourself with all of this documentation. You cannot rely on everything I see in the video because I cannot explain everything. The videos are already getting too long. So you can check the documentation yourself after watching the video. For example, um, if I, let's say you have an app, um, the wishlist icon that you see like it's a review for now. What if someone, a user is not paying for the app? Do you still want them to use this? If you don't want to do that, you can conditionally hide this, which is something that they have explained in this conditional app block. Um, it could be something that you could update a meta field in the app. So there are app meta fields, which are data specifically for your app is stored in the Shopify um, store and you can check if that block is true or false. When we talk about the billing and pricing, I will probably mention how you can update meta field, but this is something that you can also explore yourself. So cool, based on that, if this is available to true, then this block will show, if not, this will be false. For example, if someone is in the free plan, you don't want a certain block to be available. So you can conditionally hide that for the user. And this is a schema. Um, in the chapter one, we explain how a schema works and how the team structure is. The same thing applies here and you have all this, uh, access to all these informations, including you can have um, a style sheet, JavaScript, which you can mention, and it will load those files from your extension. So if this file exists in your assets directory, it will load those files for you. And you can uh, even add those files to your directory right now. Cool. Um, I did some customization. If I check the code, um, this is what I have done. I just added a button, nothing fancy, uh, a heart icon that you can change the color, a text. If user add a text, by default, these are the settings. Product, we don't need this, but let it be there. Uh, because sometimes user might want to use wishlist somewhere else. But yeah, you can have these options. This is the text. By default, it says add to wishlist, but user can change it. If you want to say like wish list or save letter, something like that. And let's redeploy this. I saved the changes and the way to redeploy is again, yarn or not. NPM run deploy. If I run the deploy, it is going to deploy it and it will probably again ask me the question because this is the second deploy and you will see the versions too. Release a new version. Yes. If you don't want to release a new version for some extensions that you have, you can do that. You can probably, Shopify will detect that. So this is the second release. You can click on this link and it should take you to the extension page in your app in here. And regarding this one, I did not test this one because if you turn this on and on development, you can bring changes to your extension. It will, um, yeah, rewrite the, the data that you have on the on the development one. So I turn this off because this one is on production now. This extension is in production. Cool, let's see, this one was deployed. This time I will remove it so we don't have it and I will refresh my page again. Let's bring myself here. And also on that note, before I do anything, if I come here in the extension and refresh it, you should see two versions of this. Um, no, in the versions, not in the extensions. Two versions and the latest version is by default active. You can, if you made any mistake, you can always come here and change this one to the active one. You can go to the extension and from here release it. It will make this one active because chances are you might make a mistake and you just want to roll back to previous version. So all the active store may not get affected. Okay, let's come back here, add block. We have one and yeah, this is wishlist icon. We changed the name, we changed everything. So if I add this, it is going to give us with some more information like wishlist, add to wishlist and it should display in here. But for now it is not. Let's save this and see if it is appearing. 
this is the color and if it doesn't appear we have to do some debugging because we didn't bring a lot of changes right so let's go back to our code and see what we have done yeah the code was fine and extension is running uh, it also gave you some suggestion if you have unused the snippet which we have we didn't use those snippets everything seems to be fine and why not why not why the text is not showing block the setting and this is the icon now let's go back to the app to app block and move this to let's see above the description change the icon to black hmm that's weird because it should because it should display the icon widget here let's preview this and see if this is rendering in the front end and maybe we made a mistake if i come here again the wish list is not displaying okay let me debug it so you can also get an idea of how you can debug your wish list icons we don't have any javascript technically it should not do anything but if you check in the inspector you do have this wishlist inspire icon if i come inside of this extension and see yeah we have button which is uh, showing here and inside of this we have the svg and we don't have the text what could be the problem if i add some text in this let's edit this as html and add a data of yes it is appearing but the rest of them is not like this icon is not appearing it's because i didn't add a height and width for the icon that's probably something i should do uh, after pausing the video basically this is how you can bring the changes and showing the icon not sure why the text is not showing let me go back to the code and see if i can find out the problem i say if block the sitting and uh, the text is not blocked if i scroll down this is the id and it should be a text it is not blank then display that block okay this is the problem in here i have mentioned block in here i mentioned setting since we are targeting settings in here uh, this should be also um, block and also this one if i save this and let's quickly deploy this while i discuss some other things in this page we don't we added like inline css we, you can just extract this into a file and put them in the assets directory and add them but instead we can just put them because we don't have a lot of styles you can directly put them here it is not going to cause any performance issue that's completely fine for the javascript we can um, extract that to a, a separate file but for this demo i will not do that instead i am going to use a um, library called alpine i am a big fan of this so i always use this in most of my project it is not like react or view it's not very heavy very lightweight version of um vue.js behind the scene probably this is using the reactive view component but you just add them in your project and you will have access to the component this is how you can create the component i have a full course on the channel about alpine.js and how you can use this you can learn it in one day if you know javascript already if you have worked with a framework like this but this is how we can um, bring this for now i'll just put it here uh, to run it um, the other way is you can go to getting started if you want to get a specific version you can do that let's use this one because we want to use the latest version but the compressed one i'll copy the script and it will also defer load it we will save it so you will have access to all campaign uh, all alpine components now in this um, snippet and i will come to this in the future video of how we will use alpine to create the components and wishlist icon but this is really useful to have a javascript library which is lightweight and easy to interact in in your app for now let's come back to our theme and see if this one works i will refresh this we did some changes and the snippet 
yep the wishlist icon is working that's great and yeah this is how it works probably will design it better to display in the center or maybe we add some more setting that's up to you add more setting so user can do it but for now if i come to the code the next step for me to do is if i click on the, um, the button i want to send some information to my server that is where uh, my backend server or app directory will handle it which information i need i need the product id and the customer id in the backend i'll grab those information save it in the database and that will be safe for that user and that is basically how we do so in the next video we will design the api and send our request to the server uh, thank you for watching i hope it has been informative and i will see you in the next video